Today we will be covering matrix scanning part for the module number three, right? So I hope you're familiar with these two common terms, like what is TCP, what is UDP protocol, or like what is OSI model and what is TCP IP model. Right. I hope you know this one. Right. Yeah, I know. Other, other than this TCP and UDP, we need to know the type of flag for the TCP we use. Right. I hope you know that part as well. Uh, like what is flag, what is finished flag and all different things. Um. Not like in depth, just like the basic. Okay, that's the part. You only need to know the basic part for all these kind of things. Like, the important point is why we use these flags. Okay. We have an idea why we use the finish flag, why we use the sync flag, acknowledgement, and all different flags. Mm, kind of. Okay, kind of. Let me just explain this one by one, and then we will start with practical after that. Okay, so you know what is TCP, you know what is UDP, then let's actually jump for the TCP flags part. I hope you know the TCP three way handshake part, the mm -hmm. client send the exchange flag and use the exchange flag acknowledgement, and then again we send the activity part. Yes. You know what is TCP three way handshake? Okay, so just let me just open the plain part, or let me just start with the practical. Then you will better understand the flags part. So I'll be using these two machines here. Like the first one is Kali, I mean, those 10. For Kali, Windows 10 metastable table or Windows 7 machine. Like, I don't know because the IP of all, all these machines, I'm just inside the network. I'm assuming this, I'm just inside the network. I don't know which machines are running in the network. Right? So the main topic today was we just have to identify which machines because what machines were running in our network. Right? And we need to identify the operating system and all the services running on those machines. Let's start with that. Let's start with that. Just to identify all the machines in our network, you can do multiple things. For the simplest way to identify all the active machines is just by broadcasting the R packets, the ARP packets, right? So what ARP packets will do is just broadcast a packet in our network, like who, who is at IP address 1.1.1.15. And if there was a machine who has the IP address 1.15, right, the machine will reply me that I am the machine which has the MAC address like something like C1, C2, C3, C4, C5. I am the machine with the MAC address and I have the IP address 1.15. Let me just show you that part. And for this to just to explain the flags and just to explain the packets in a better way, I'm using a tool like we call it Wireshark, just for network sniffing. We use Wireshark for network sniffing part. Right. Let me just go with the first screen here. Yeah. So I'm using it on the right hand side. You just move my terminal on the left hand side. I'm just capturing traffic for the Ethernet interface here because right now I'm connected to the Ethernet interface. Right? So I'm only capturing traffic for the Ethernet. Just go and double click. And if I just want to, if I just start broadcasting the ARP packets, we have multiple options which you can use to broadcast the ARP packet in your, in your local network. And the simplest way was like just go with ARP hyphen span. You can use hyphen L for the local. Like I just want to broadcast packets in my local network. Or you can use hyphen hyphen local as well. Both the things were same. You can use single hyphen L for the local, or you can use hyphen hyphen local. Both the things were same. If I just press enter, again, go to for the root permission, so I have to go with sudo part here. Just go with sudo, ARP scan, and the local. Press enter, password, enter the password, and we get a list of all the IP addresses in my machine. Right now, I'm in a village network, I'm not in the local. Net network, which is configured by my VMware. I'm in the bridge network, so I can identify all the machines in my main network. Right? I have a list of all the machines. Like 1.1 was there, 1.2 was there, and you can see the machine name as like which, like you can say which company developed the machine. We have something like Microsoft Intel Corporation. We have some MicroStar. We have some Microsoft Intel Corporation. There are different things here. Right? You can identify all the active machines. Just by broadcasting the ARP packet. And if I explain you the if I explain you the traffic here, you can just search here. We just apply some filters. Let's go with ARP. So I just want to list out all the ARP packets. Right. You just apply the filter ARP and press enter. You can see all the ARP packets over there. And what I'm doing is I'm just broadcasting the packets in my local network. Like just just go with this thing. Don't go with time. And don't go with the land part as well. It's not 
may prepare us right now. I'm just talking about my, I'm just talking about the, this part. So just go with this info part. You can see here, I'm just broadcasting some packet, like who has this IP address, 192.168.1.70. Tell back, or you can say reply back to this IP, 192.168.1.1. Right. I'm just broadcasting my packets. I'm just asking like who has type address 168. Reply back at 1.7 because I know 1.7 is my own IP address. If I go with IF phone, you can verify. 1.7 is my IP address. So I'm just broadcasting a packet like who had this IP address and just reply back to me. If there was a machine with that IP address, we will get a reply. And you can see we got a reply from 1.4, 1.5, 1.6. And if you can verify these things. Let's just verify this. So let's just check where is 1.6 and 1.5. So 1.1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And here we go the reply. You can see here. I just broadcast a packet. You can see like where is 1.4 packet was sent for me. Yeah. There is a packet at number 56. So sent from one this was sent from my machine. Like who has this IP address 192.168.1.4? Reply back at 1.7. And here we get the reply. Like this one at, at again, no, 59. Like 192.168.1.4 is at this MAC address. It means we can identify like the IP address for that machine, which, are, which were active in the network. And we can easily identify the MAC address as well for the machine in our local network. Just by broadcasting simple ARP packets. So just to broadcast our packets, ARP scan is just one utility which you can use. The second one which you can use is the net discover again. So I have a question. Yes. So two questions here. So what if, if I want to scan outside 192.168? I have some theories other like 10 network. Okay. Then you can just start ping the machine. You can just ping the network. You can just ping the machines one by one. No, is there any filter with ARP scan? If I want to specify the range, okay. no, 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 you can't specify that part. ARP scan, you can only broadcast packet in your local network only. If I just go out to ARP hyphen scan and let's go with hyphen hyphen L. You can't go with the different networks, you can only broadcast packet in your local network. If I just try, let me just go with here. If I just go with ARP hyphen scan. To go with sudo again, like it with network you want to broadcast it. So you go nine two one six eight. Let's say five dot zero slash twenty four. Right, I have to specify the complete network address like with the CIDR value. Right, if I press enter, it will broadcast the packet, but it will not receive the packet because it will prompt the machine to reply back at our local network. Like if I just show you the traffic here, just capture it again. Then go the car. I am broadcasting packets, but I'm asking the machines to reply back at my local network, at my private network, you can say. I have my private IP here on 9216.1.7. So machines outside my network cannot reply back to my private network. If you have a public IP, then you can do that part for the other for other networks IP. Because other machines were able to access your IP address because you have a public IP there. But if you have okay. a private IP, then you can't just broadcast PRP packets and you will not get any kind of reply here. But if you have a public IP, then you can do that. Okay. Right? With a simple ARP scan the VM networks, you can't do that. Okay. If you are using something like a machine from the cloud part, or if you have a public IP, if you are using some servers, then you can do that. Then you can specify the network and then you will get the reply back from the machine because they can access your machine. They can access okay. your IPN. So what is the question? Uh, second, yeah, it answered the second question as well. So I was going to ask you if we don't write local, so can it scan outside the local, but you said we cannot. We cannot do that part because I'm just asking machines to reply back to my private IP address here. Yeah, it can't reach it. We can't, they can't reach it. They can't access the IP address. Okay. That's the point here. But if okay. you have the public IP, then you can do that. Okay. So I'm just broadcasting my local network right now, and we got a list of all the IP addresses. We just scroll above. Here, we got a list of all the IP addresses right now. I'm in the bridge connection. Let me just change it so I can identify the IP address from my Windows 10 machine. 
Let us pray to the machine and Windows 7 machine. Try to just switch it back to the local NAN network. So I'm, just, I'm right now in the bridge network. You just switch back to NAN and OK. Now, if I again go with ARPS NAN, sudo permission, let us go with sudo first. One second. So, yes. so your voice will come first, is coming first, and then the video comes a little bit later, like three or four seconds. So can you please speak a little bit slow? I can do that part, all right. Okay. I'll be going slow. Okay. So let me just go with the ARP scan again. But right now I'm in the net network, right? So if my machine will broadcast packets, and if I go with IF config, right? My machine will broadcast packet in my local network at 111.0 slash 24. Again, you can identify the net network. You can identify your network address with the help of the IP address and net mask. I hope you can do that. Yeah. You can identify the network address. Okay. So I'm just broadcasting again packets in my local network. You just specify network address again, or you can just go with hyphen L option, which is a much easier thing. Yeah. Just go with again RP scan hyphen L for local network. And we get a list of all the IP addresses in our network. So we got multiple addresses like 1.2 here, 1.3, 1.6, 31, and 254. We have a functionality in the VMware generally. VMware used 1.2 as your gateway. Like if I just show you the configurations, you just keep that. If I just show you the configuration, just go with this edit, virtual network editor here. And this click here. Oh, I cannot see them there. Let me just repeat the step. Just check my network. Oh, I'm a good network. And right now I'm in the net network. Right. So again, I'll go with this option like change settings at the bottom right. Just go with this option, change settings. Can you see my screen? Yeah, I can see the screen now. Oh. Just go with the yes here. So after getting these options here, what you can do, just go with this net options because you were connected to the net network, right? And here you can see the DHCP settings. You have the option for DHCP settings on the bottom right again. And here you can see the default gateway. Like if you just go with the gateway, you don't have gateway here, you have net gateway in net settings, just go here. Just go with these net settings here at the bottom, at the middle right. And here you can see the default gateway. My VMware was using 1.2 as the default gateway, right? So here the address we have, like 1.2 we received there, is the default gateway, right? And I know my machine, with my VMware, use 1.254 as a broadcast address. So what I will do, I will just simply ignore these two addresses, like 1.2 and 1.254, right? Just after ignoring these two addresses, what I get? These three, these three IP addresses, 1.3, 1.6, and 1.131. So what I will do, I'll just simply create a text file here. Just go with text. And you can just write down these IP addresses in a text file. The first one is 1.3, second one was 1.6, and the last one was 1.31. Right? And just save the file with any name. You can use any name again. I'm going to like ip.txt, right? And just save the file. I got the IP addresses here in my local network. Other than this ARP scan, you can use one more utility here in Kali Linux, do a simple net discover, right? But the point with net discover is if you just enter the command net discover and then press enter, it will start finding IP addresses in this network addresses, like 192.168 dot 
So that in line two one six eight zero dot zero slash sixteen, right? It will start broadcasting packets for these networks, right? But we were in a different network. Sometimes you get the IP addresses there. Sometimes you not get the IP addresses. But first, the point is the net discover was broadcasting packets in these networks one nine two one six eight, which starts from this one nine two one six eight again. But we were in a different It's network. Fixed. So this is fixed. It will start from one nine two one six eight. Net discover by default works with one nine two one six eight. Okay. You can switch it. Just to switch this, you can just go with the option hyphen R. Just to specify the range here, right? Just go with hyphen R, and then you can specify your network address like one dot one dot one dot zero slash twenty four. Again, then you have to you have to specify the complete network address with the CIDR value, and then just press enter. It will start broadcasting packets in my local network this time, right? And sometimes we got the IP addresses here, sometimes we don't. But again, you can use that discover as well for the same thing. It's not that much accurate, that much uh, useful all the time. But you can use this. You should know this one. Should know about that discover as well, other than this ART scan. We have other tools as well which you can use, like the NMAP. Right? You can just scan the network for all the active machines. In your networks with the N map. So in N map, we have an option like S and N, which can for generally scan the network. Right? You can use this option N map. I can scan the network for the small N and small N, and then you have to specify the complete network address here again. So the network address was one dot zero slash twenty four. Again, N map will start broadcasting the R packets and wait for the reply. As soon as you get the reply. Will prompt you the IP address. <coughs> so just press enter, and you should wait for the output. <coughs> and we get our output like one dot two. We got the IPs. We got one dot three, one dot six, one dot ten thirty one, one dot thirty one sorry, one dot two fifty four, and one dot seven again. If I just go with IF config, you can see one dot seven was my IP address. So I can simply ignore one dot seven, ignore one dot two fifty four because it's a broadcast address for the VM, yeah. and we can ignore one dot two because it's a default gateway address to my VM, right? So again, we got the three IP addresses: one dot three, one dot six, and one dot thirty one. Yeah, you can just verify with different tools. Like sometimes you are not able to access all the machines, like you can't get the output for all the machines to the R plan. At that time, you can just switch to the net discover part. Sometimes you get the result from net discover. Otherwise, you can just use N map as well. Again, we have multiple tools, multiple utilities for the same thing. You can use anything again. Other than this, identifying the active machines. Then, what was your next step after identifying machines? What was what was your next step? Just identify all the active services running on those machines. Right. For that, you can just switch. You can just stick to the N map part. And map is again one of the best tool in the market for network scanning part, either for the vulnerability, either for the open port scanning, either for the version part, either for the weakness, whatever it was. But you can use and map for almost every kind of network scanning, right? So again, you can just and you can just write some commands like and map and just specify the IP address. You can go with a single IP address. You can go with multiple IP addresses, or you can just scan the entire network at the same time. Right for a single IP again, we have simpler format. Like just enter the IP address here. The first one was I think one dot three, if I'm not wrong. Right, you can go with a single IP. And if you want to scan multiple IP addresses, more than one IP address at the same time, just give it a space and just enter the second IP address one dot six. If you want to again enter one more IP address, again give it a space and again use third IP address. You can just go as long as you want or You can just scan the entire network at the same time. For network, you specify network address here, then go with zero and slash twenty four. So that completes network address here. Again, if you just press enter, and it will first identify active machines in your network, and then starts network, and then jump to the simple port scanning part. One more thing, and the by default scan your common thousand ports only. And that will only scan common thousand ports in your machine, right? But we don't have 
12,000 ports in your machine. We have around 65536 ports, which starts yeah. from zero, which ends to 65535. But we don't generally use port number zero for any kind of communication, but we can use it again. We can use port number zero if you want, but it's not specified. We don't generally use port number zero, but we can use. So just to specify that we want to send all the 65535 ports, but if you want to specify a range, more than 1,000 ports, so to specify some kind of range for the scanning, you can just go with nmap, icon P for the port options, and then if you specify the range, we can specify a single port number. Like if I want to scan port number 55 or port number 80, you can say, you can specify a single port number, you can specify multiple port number, just with the comma. Use, you specify the first port number, use the comma, specify other port number, again use the comma, you can enter as much as port number as you want. It's again your choice. Or you can specify the range as well. Like if I want to scan from port number one, to let's say 10,000. I can specify range as well for the port. Or if you want to scan all the entire 65536 ports, then what you can do, you can use the option hyphen P hyphen. I'm using one more hyphen here. Just to specify the complete range for the ports. I want to scan all the 65536 ports. Right? For that, you can use the option hyphen P hyphen. Or in a better way, you can again specify the port range. Start from zero to let's say 65535. Again, you can specify four ranges. You can specify single port as well. It's completely your choice. Ten more ports, more than like thousand ports, is again ten consuming thing. But you can go with that part as well. Okay. But these ports, as you can see, we got some outputs here. Like for if I just go with this one first. So for one dot two, we got a I we got a port here at fifty three. Right, because we know in our default case, like we in our default. Uh, the router configuration part, we have a DNS service running out there. We have a DNS part in the router as well. So we got a service, we got a port number 53, which was active on the IP address 1.2. Other than this 1.2, we got some ports for 1.3 as well. We have service names as well, we have status ports as well, and we have port number as well. Again, all these ports were open here. Like if you are firewall, if you have firewall on any kind of a machine or any port number, if you, have, if you have firewall running on any port number, then you will get this status code. Then you get the status as filtered. Like if I just go with that part, if I just go with NMAP and let's go with any website, like uh, just like any website name. Let's pick any random website from the history. Those right. college website there. Yeah, this one is KSG College of Art. Whatever it was. So I'm just scanning for this IP address. It's a public IP, so I can access the machine. Right. So just go with NMAP and just go with IP. Just place the address here and press enter. You have to remove this option like HTTP. And this www as well, and then press enter again. We got a slash. You have to remove these things like www and the slash at the end. You have to remove this, right? But we got few options, we got few open ports here. But if I just go with more ports, like if I go with hyphen P, and let's say I want to spend from port number one to let's say 10,000, and then press enter. Maybe we got some other services, some other ports as well. Just wait for two seconds. So on Kali yeah. also, uh, we can turn off ports. Yeah, we can't turn off the port for other machines. We can't no, no. Let's say if I'm running Kali and you're doing NMAP scan. So is there a way to turn on or off the ports on Kali? There is a way. For all the Linux machines, we have services. Like if you just go with the ETC part, like if you just want to disable any kind of services, you can just go with the command like uh, service. Like if you want to disable, you want to enable some kind of services. Like we have few options here. Like I can have a status. Like just like all the running services first. 
status hyphen all. For the services with the plus symbol, but in the running state, you want to force the service code, just block the service. Code. What you can do? Just go with the command service stop and the service name again. You can just stop any service, it's completely out there. Let me just go with this like LG. I don't know why they use this service. I'm just going with this option. So to go with pseudo permissions. Okay, and it is not recognized. I don't know why. How about the port number? If I want to open 10,000 ports, then? So enable all the 10,000 services. You can just go with like service. You can't enable all the services at the same time. You have to enable them one by one. If which service you want to scan, if which service you want, you want to enable. And if you want to enable like SSH service, SSH service, again, you have to enable them and then you have to configure it again for the security part. And for configuration, okay. you have different things. You just if you first start the SSH service, then you will jump to the configuration part. So service part SSH. Okay, thank you, man. Password. I'm going with the command form and just type in the service name here. You have to specify service in the service name and then the option. You want to start it, you want to stop it. Right? I'm going along with the command like this. If you just want to stop this service, have GED. Then you have to go with the service name first, service, service name, and then go with stop. And you will, you will stop the services. Again, if I go with like status for all the services, You can see have GED is have GED right now. That was in the stop. It's not, it's not running you. But if you just go with SSH service this time, stay in the running state because you have just enabled the service here. After enabling the service, what's the, what's the most important part for all the machines? You have to configure the service. And for configuration part, you can just go with like this option. Just go to this directory for slash ATC. Right. Here we have configuration part for almost all the services. You just want to go with like SSH. You can just go with LS SSH. We have all the folders. We have all the files in this folder SSH. There was a folder with the name SSH in the ETC. Right. And in this SSH folder, we have the configuration for the SSH. Like SSH.config.com. So if you just want, you can just go with SSH. GDIT. I'm just using any editor here. Just go with SSH. I'll actually again, SSH dot con should be there. SSH D and the start config. And we have all the configuration for the services in this file, right? Which code you want to use, listen address, from which addresses you want to accept the connection. We have all the configuration in this file. So after enabling the service or after disabling the service, the configuration for the services should be configured properly. All the, you can say most of the time, the important part factor was the important factor for all this kind of attacks, for all this kind of hacks, was the misconfigured service. If you have a misconfigured service, anyone can easily exploit it. Right? So, the services should be properly configured. Like, I should only enable the addresses which I trust to the listening form, right? to be accepting connections form. Again, you can just provide Kerberos option, you have multiple other, we have multiple key for multiple services. Right? So, after enabling services, please. So you can say you should configure the service properly. Or you can enable services one by one with this simple service command right here. Service, service name, and the status. You want to stop it, you want to start, you want to start it, you want to restart it, you want to enable, disable, whatever you want. You can do with this service command here. Service, the service name, and then the option. Okay. 
after this. So it's still running. We just get back. Okay. So let me just enable the firewall in one of my machines. Let's go with Windows 10 here. Let me enable the firewalls. Again, the firewall is still disabled. That's why I can I, I can just start the scanning for this. Like if I just want to identify the machines, then what you can do, you can just ping the machine one by one. And with the help of TTL value, you can verify the machine was running some Windows operating system on the back end part. Machine was running some Linux operating system on the back end part, or it's using Mac OS in the back end. This is a simple ping command you can do that. So just let me just ping the machine at 1.3 first. So we will TTL value at 64. Here you can see. And we know, like for Linux machine, generally use TTL value at 64. Again, you can change this TTL value just to cool others with OS you are using, right? If you just change the TTL value, it becomes much harder for anyone to identify the operating system. But again, you can identify the OS even after changing the TTL value. But with just simple ping command, you can just give it a hint. You can just get a hint. But OS was running on the back end, right? So 1.3 is running Linux. So if I just go with 1.6 here, let me just check. It's running Windows on the back end part, right? If you can, Ping the machine. I can just ping 1.31 as well. Okay, I can ping the machine at 131. So let me just check. So the IP is on my Windows 10 machine. Let me just go with firewall first. Let's go with the CMD first. Again, go with IP config to identify the IP address. If you have an enabled firewall, if you have a default firewall in Windows 10, right? Then you can't even ping the machine because your firewall has some rules. It will block your ICMP packets, right? You can't go with simple default services. Your machine, you just go with the scanning part for the 1.31 for this Windows 10 machine. So you just want to scan the default ports. You just go with NMAP. Let's just go with 131 here. You just go with one. Dot one one dot thirty one and then press enter. It will list it will give you a list of all the services which were unable or you can it will say to give you a list of all the ports, all the services which were enabled by other which were enabled by other applications in the system. Right? If I install any kind of server on that Windows 10 machine, let me just install it. So I will let's call it download. Have the application here. I have to install. That is okay. So let's go with it. We have the application. Yeah, download this application. Let's close. So, if you just remember this part, for default, before installing any applications, which are installing any, any kind of port, any kind of services in my machine. When I scan for this machine 131, we got nothing. Zero ports, zero services was displayed by this animal. But if I install any server here, right? And so this was running right now. Now, after that, what I can do is 
if I again go with end map at 31. What is PN for? Four finger must like the force scanning for all the open ports. What okay. and map will do? And map will first identify the machine was active or not. Right. So with this PN option, we will command the and map just don't verify the machine was active or not. Just start go scroll with the port scanning. Don't verify the machine was active or not. Don't ping the machine. And stand for don't ping. PN stands for don't or not to ping the machine. Or not to verify the machine was in running state or the active state or not. For that, we use PN option there. Let me just check here. We remember this one. At this time, we got our open port WST API at port number 5357. But again, it's a just it's, it's a single service right now. And here we got nothing. Zero host up. Because on the back end part, my machine was blocking my ping packets. Right. If I again go with PND, check my configuration, I would go with 35. So just go with firewall. My firewall is next to stage. So we should wait for this output for the PN. We will get back to that part once this can be still running on the back end in this we have. Right. In the meanwhile, let's just go with some other command for the end map, which you can use for the same thing. So by default, you end up use some like end up sensing sync packets for different ports. Like we'll show you the traffic for end map. Just clear the filter first. If I just show you the traffic here, you can see like my machine 1.7 was sending some packets to 131 and you can see a sync flag was there. Okay. You can see my machine at 1.7 was sending some packets, sending some sync packets just to establish a connection, just to initiate a connection my NMAP was sending some sync flags, SYN flags, right? So all the SYN flags was used to initiate a connection with that machine on that specific port number. And you can just verify the port number as well, like this port number 45772. Is the port number used from, used by this Kali Linux to initiate a connection request? And the Kali Linux send a connection request to this 31, window 31 machine, which is a Windows 10 machine again, on the port number, 616. I'm sending a connection request with the sync flag at 616 port number to the victim's machine. Right. So by default, NMAP use your sync flags just to verify. Like you can you can establish a port, you can establish a connection on the specific port or not, just to verify that thing. But NMAP use sync flags by default. So you can know, like for all the sand packets, like if you send any kind of packet with any flag or without any flag, even then in response. We got a flag or we got a response on the machine for the acknowledgement. Like if you send any message with a flag or without a flag to any machine, right? For the confirmation part that the machine received the message, you get a flag from that machine with the acknowledgement flag, with the ACK as a receipt as a confirmation part that the machine received the message successfully. Right? So what's the port number here? On this machine? Yes, the port number that is choosing to send the packets. Like Ali Linux was using port number 45772. If I just okay. Move, if I just double click on this one. Let me just double click. And you can just see here. Like for you can just see source port number as 45772. Who was the source here? Like Ali Linux machine. Right. And you can see the destination port number as 616. Who was destined out there? My Windows 10 machine. So my machine was using this port number 45772 to send a packet to my 
Windows 10 machine at port number 616. And map will send connection request on different ports. As you can see, if I just stop it, just verify. Yeah. I will come back to that part again. If I just stop it here or restart the scan, right? Let me use the command nmap r just to scan the ports in a series, like start with port number one, then go to port number two, then port number three, four, and five. Scan the ports, scan the services in a sequential order. For that, I'm using this option app nmap r here and just go with 131 and press enter. Right, my machine sent some packets. We got some packets here. If I just stop it and apply some filter like ip.src for the source, equal equals to, like I want to verify the source. I know the source was 1.7. And I want to apply one more filter here like ip. Dot, uh, let's just go with ip.dsc for destination. Let's go with equal equal at 31. And then press enter. Okay, we have to think for a good machine. You can say, and if the nmap get a reply from the for the ping, only then it will proceed the further port scanning. If the machine, if nmap was able to ping the machine, but if nmap get a reply for the ping, right? Only then end up proceed with the for the only and the only then end up will proceed with the port scanning part. Right, just to bypass that, I have to go with the not to ping the machine or don't ping option here. And let me again start this one and let's go. You can see this time and I was sending some packets from this random port number as my source one and the source port was oh sorry, the destination port was. 1, 3, 4, 6, 7, 9, 13, 17. We were scanning all the ports one by one. Right? And you can see sometimes the source port number was seen here. And you can use the same port as a source. Then you can use any random port number as the source port number again. But I'm scanning and sending sync request. I'm just sending connection request on different ports. On the destination machine here, right? And you can verify this thing as well. Like one, three, seven, and map by default stand for thousand common ports. So all the missing port number, like port number two here, port number five here, are not in the list of common ports for the end map, right? If you just want to scan all the ports, like from one to let's say thousand or ten thousand, you want to scan all the ports one by one. Then you can go with like hyphen P option and you can specify like one to thousand. Scan all the ports one by one. Again, if I just go with this, again, if I just reset the wire shot and then just proceed with the scan, I can see now this time no ports were skipped by the end map one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and so on. Again, right? End map scan multiple times. For a single port, like if you send a request to the port, you won't get a reply. Again, NMAP will send the request. Right? NMAP did this time twice. NMAP scan a port twice. Right? Always keep it in mind. NMAP scan a port twice. Okay. So we got a we got a message, or we can send a message from different ports. Like here, the source port number was four nine six seventy four, and the request was sent to port number nine on the station machine. But here. The port number was what is it, the source port number 49680. It's a different port, but again, the destination port was same here at port number nine. Or you can just see these two packets packet number at 55 and at 73. Right? The source port number was different, but for the destination port number was same here 10 or 10. Right? You can just scan these things using the scan for. All the ports, you can scan the ports one by one in a sequential order in random order. By default, NMAP scan the ports in a random order. Like it can start with like port number 80, then 443, then 53, then 22, then let's say like 80, 80, right? By default, it starts with a random port number. Other than this, let's just come back to the previous tab here. 
we got a reply so we got a service running here at port number 5357 <coughs> we don't we won't get any kind of service running any kind of port was not open by this application installed on the machine but the point is if the firewall was running on the victim's machine right at that time your nmap scan will only list out this applic only will list out the services or the ports which are enabled by third party software third party applications out there right you can't identify the default services enabled by the windows machine if the firewall was running this was the result when the firewall was running let's just disable the firewall so i can show you the result what if i want to see the default ones what is it? what if i want to see the default ports okay let me i will explain that part if you just want to enable if you just want to see the default ports right you can just assume this thing. like if you have if you have, if your victim was running windows 10 on the back end part right we have some default services which are always enabled in windows 7 windows 10 as well like smb service was always running net bio service was always running on the back end you can just go with this thing just identify the operating system for that machine and then you can assume like oh windows 10 or windows 7 they always use this service on the back end part if you until your until your user disable those services manually right your windows 10 always enable always keep those services in the running state like now after enable after disabling the firewall if i just show you the running services if i just show you the default running services for the machine it is just go with simple and map and the ip addresses i'm not using hyphen pn option here because the firewall was disabled this time Right. I can easily ping the machine as well. Like if I just go with ping at 31. If you remember, while the firewall was active, I can't even ping the machine. I'm not able to ping the machine. Right. But after disabling the firewall, I can ping the machine. So I can just go without don't ping option here. And just press enter. This will list out all the default services as well and all the services are enabled by the third party applications as well. And you can see we got some services. Like that, BIOS was there, SMB was there. These services were running, right? You can just go with these things as well. Like if you identify some machine from the back end, like your victim was using Windows, and then you can just give it as zoom. Like there should be like there should be something like that BIOS for the if your victim was using Windows 10, the SMB service version would be like like version three. Right, your victim should be using actually version three, and we have experts for version three as well. If your victim was using like Windows 8 or Windows 7, then SMB version would be like SMB version 1 or SMB version 2. Right? So you have to assume these things sometimes. Otherwise, if you have the if your victim has a disabled firewall or if your, if your victim was not using firewalls on the back end part, then you can just go with simple and not and, and you can verify, you can identify the default services running there. Right? So you can do these things as well. Otherwise, your victim was using firewalls. Only then you get a list of all the ports enabled by the third party services, third party applications. Okay. You just enable it again. After enabling firewall, you can't even ping the machine. So you can just verify the firewall was running or not. You can just start with the ping. You can just verify the firewall with the ping. 31. I can't ping the machine, you can say. I'm just sending the packets, but no packet was received by my Kali remix. So just if you can see here, seven packets were transmitted, but zero packets were received because my firewall dropped all the SMP requests sent by my Kali remix machine. We have one more option through which we can verify if the firewall was running or not on the backend part. That was simple. You can just go with test root. Test root. And just go with the IP address is like 31. So we use trace loop just to identify the trace, to identify the number of hops, number of machines, right? In the, the path, you can say, like if I'm sending some request from my career machine to google.com, right? I just want to identify which machines. So you can say my request was followed by which machine. Like first, my request will go to my main Windows 10 machine, then my request will go to my router, then my router, then from my router, my, my request will send to my ISP and so on. Right? If I want to identify yeah. this path, if 
I just want to identify this uh, number of hops, number of machines which were encountered from the from the stores to the destination part. I can use trace route here, and you can just verify these things. Just go with trace route and press enter. If you get stars for all these thirty hops, with that you can verify like the firewall was running on the back end. You get stars for all these thirty hops. For all these thirty hops data. 60 packets, 60 bytes, packets transmitted from my Kali Linux to this machine, and we were getting starts starting from hope number one, like say, like hope number 30. So, what if you use a website here? So, it will show you some routes, some hopes, and your site name, anyone like google.com. Okay, let's go to google.com. I got my gateway. So this means they don't have their firewall running. They had their firewall, but the firewall was not running, not using some kind of a, you can say what you call it. Some kind of rules were not configured just to block this kind of ICM2 packets. Like if your firewall was blocking ICM2 packets, like let's say if your Google firewall, you can see the firewall was running on the Google part and the, there was some rules just to block the ICM2 packets, then you can't even ping Google. Okay. As like your ping requests, your trace route was just sending the ICMP packets to all the hopes. Right? The same thing was followed there. But if your if your firewall was blocking the ICMP packets, or generally they call it the ping packets, then you can't go with like trace route part, you can't go with the ping. Or we have one more option which you can use, which is more useful, you can say. Then you can just go with NMAP, iPhone small s and capital A. Right, we generally call it like ping scan. I think if I'm not wrong, we generally call it ping scan because instead of sending the sync packets, you just just come back to the Wireshark part here. Instead of sending the sync packets to initiate a connection request, what I will do, I will just send the acknowledgement directly. Right, if I get a reply, then it means the firewall was not running. If I'm not able to get any reply from that machine, I can verify that the firewall was running on the back end. So with this option hyphen small s and capital A, you can verify the firewall was running or not. Let me just show you here. Let's go with 131 first. So one question. So if you trace out google.com from Windows, it will show you some routers, but Kali is not saying that. Let me just explain. If I just execute the same command for so the trace for my Windows machine. Yeah. Let's go with tracer. And let's go Google.com. We got one hope. We got the second hope to my editor broadband. Right? So my public IP 1221614725. Right? I got the hopes sometimes from the VMware, from the virtual for the virtual machine. It will only list out the gateway. Because I'm using NAT networks here, I'm using some VM networks here. I don't know what the compilation for the back for the back end part, but the VM never show you. The VM will never show you the hopes other than this gateway. But if you are using Kali Linux on the main machine, then you can get number of hopes for all those things. Like in Windows, I got two hopes. First one is the one traders. Right? That's one trader was just I have configured this one like 192.168. I have modified my host file in Windows and just changed this IP address. I just specified a name for this IP address as oneTraders.com. That's why it's listed out as one trader. Yeah. I got the name for my one for the gateway 1.1. 1 .1. I got my public IP here, 122. Right? If you wait. You will get other links as well. You will get other hopes as well. You will list out the hope for the point is. It always list out the hopes. If your firewall was accepting some ICMP or the ping packets, only then you get the hopes here. <laughs> other than this, let me just modify this one traders first. So I have to go with. Configurations here. I can just go with system. Windows. 
Section 32, with drivers that go with DTC, and here we have the option. This one. Just change it and just take the file. I have to use it with the to the permission or the admin permissions. So just let me just modify the permission to be better. Please add it. So I just open Notepad with like uh, admin privileges and it will let me edit this file. Sorry. So if you open notepad with admin. Yes. With admin, and then you can change this file. I can change the file because I don't have permission for the user. If you remember, okay. I just modify, I, I have just modified the permission. Okay. okay. Like okay. the user can modify the file, the user can delete the file, remove the file. Okay. I just assign the permissions to the user with this option, like properties, security part. I go with the users here, edit, you can see. Right now, these permissions were modified. You can see with the dark stick here, take full control. User can modify the file, but before modifying these permissions, my user can only read and execute the file. He can't modify it or he can't write the file. Right? So you can use this, you can just open it with the slow permission, with the admin permission again. Other than this, like with this hyphen S sense, this option. You just start with my Wireshark, it's funny, and just press enter, and go with the password. And you can see, now, with this option, hyphen, small s, and capital K, my Kali Linux will send the package, send the connection request, you can send the package to the machine, 1.31. But this time, I'm using the acknowledgement flag, ACK flag, just to verify that on the back end, firewall was running or not. Just for that, I'm using the acknowledgement flag. And if you get the output, like 4,000 scan ports on this machine are filtered, right? Filter specify that you have firewall running on the back end for your victim's machine, you can say. The firewall was running, you get the output as filtered. Otherwise, you get the output as unfiltered. Like if I just go with other machine, let's call dot sticks and just wait. You got the output as unfiltered. If there was no firewall running for one dot six there again if i just go with one dot three as well we got the output as unfiltered here right so with these options you can verify if the firewall was running or not on the experience machine and if the firewall was running you have to assume something you have to assume two services like if your victim was using windows 10 then the first service would be like this one if your victim was using linux machine then the first service would be like this one you have to value you have to assume you at that time right so if you remember i have executed a command like nmap for this ksg college.com for the thousand common for the ten thousand dollars here to this option hyphen key i specified a range from one to ten thousand and here you can see the status like open 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 and all different things but the port number 137 there was filtered Right, it means the firewall has some rules for this port number 137 out there. Firewall has some rules for the net bios service. Firewall has some rules for this net bios SSM service, right? For the SMB services as well. Actually, right? so you can just verify these things. Which rules were, or for you can say, on which services the firewall has some rules. Like if your firewall has some rules for SSH, FTP, SMTP, for all these kind of services, you can verify these things. With the status and map can show you multiple status, like if you have a port in the open state and you can establish a connection, right? If I just show you the output here, let me just show you 1.3 at this point, just to show you why we got the port in the open state, right? Let me just start the capturing again, but this time I'm not going with 31 here, let's go with 1.3, right? So just to always this option. I'm using hyphen R to scan the ports in a sequential order, start from port number one, and then so on, right? And just press enter. 
we got a few ports there. And we have few packets in our wire chart type. If you just analyze the packets, let's just say let's start with the packet port number 21. Because and the says like port number 21 was in the open state. If you just identify the request and then I then I will show you the response to the port number 21. Here you can see I send a request from my link from my Kali Linux at 1.7 to my Linux version at 1.3. From this port number double five eight seventy four to port number twenty one again, and after this, okay, I have to modify the filter. Now we can analyze the request and response to port. Oh, okay, so now you can see my machine at one dot seven and a request on this port number twenty one at packet number sixty six only selected. Just bottom, just below this red flag. And you can just go with this request. I got a request. I send a request from 1.7 to 1.3 from port number 55874 to port number 21. And if you just came down, you can see at packet number 72, I got a reply from 1.3 to 1.7 from port number 21 to the same port 55874. But this time, I got a reply with sync plus acknowledgement, right? If you get a reply with sync plus acknowledgement, just keep the TCP TV handshake in the mind. If you get a reply for your sync flags, like when you send a sync request and you get a reply with sync plus acknowledgement, it means the port was in open state and you can establish a connection out there. With that sync plus acknowledgement, you can verify the if you get a reply with sync plus acknowledgement, it means the port was in open state. But if you get a reply like RST with the RST flag and the acknowledgement, right? If in reply you get the RST flag, it means the port was in closed state or the firewall was blocking your connection request for that specific port. Right? It means you can't establish a connection on those ports. Right? Your RST flag was generally used. To reset the connections okay. one question and yes so what if i send the ack flag directly instead of the sync one what is the difference like why would i want to use that over the other if we use if you just directly send the acknowledgement flag it will not work for the port scanning it will only work with like it will just go with the output for the acknowledgement flag also it will execute smart SA for one dot three, start the second capturing, and just press enter. Got few outputs, just drop it. Okay, just to go with like sequential port scanning. So I'm using hyper R as well here. So I can show you the request and response in a sequential. Right, and press enter. Now, we got the output, but if you remember this one, again. We got the RST flag for all the packets here. Like for 1, 3, 4, 7, 6, 20, 21. Right? When I send flag to 21, again I got a request, like again I got a RST flag. Right? Same thing works. I don't know how NMAP works for this acknowledgement flag for the backend part, how they were analyzing the response. Like if I just use one more option here, like NMAP, this command, to like hyphen hyphen reason. And press enter. They will show you the reason why they use the report as unfiltered because all thousand resets were received by this. Oh, all thousand resets were received by this machine, received by this Kali Linux machine for this from this 1.3. But if I just execute the same thing for 31, where the fiber was running, machine will not reply me for this. I won't get any kind of reply from that machine. I'm just sending the acknowledgement flags here. Machine was not sending me reply. Because the machine was not replying back to me. Right? Because of that part, NMAP will show you the reason. NMAP will, will show you the response as filtered. Because we're not receiving any kind of response from that machine. And you can see. Because no, because for thousand no responses from that machine. 
and we have to say a firewall was just dropping your request so you have to say just blocking your request machine will not reply you there that's why for this 31 we got the output as filtered so it has a firewall was just blocking our packet but in the, in the normal machine if you if you can send the what do you call it man when you send the acknowledgement flag directly to that machine if, if, and your machine will reply then your firewall was in disabled state and if you are not receiving some kind of response from that machine then the firewall was in unable state you can say firewall was active on the victim's machine if you are not getting any kind of re response from that machine so with this with just with this response and this reset flags five your end map was analyzing the end map was showing us the reason end map was showing us the result as filter for filter it's just the RST flag for just for the no response part, right? If as you can see here for 31, we won't get any response. But if I just scan it here for again for 1.3, that's 1.3 here. Okay, there it is. That's 1.3. And part of our today. I can see I am getting some reset flags in my response. Right? If you get the response, only then you can say like so your your machine was replying back, it means the firewall was not running there, or your firewall was not dropping your request, not dropping your request. So with this analysis, you can just verify if your fact like the firewall was running or not in the back end. So here it was not blocking. There was no firewall at 1.3. You can see your firewall was not in enable, not in active state. Okay. So I just told 1.3. So that was a matter of machine. This is a vulnerable machine, right? We don't have any kind of firewall at 1.3. And if I just told 1.6 out there, let me just told 1.6. Right? Now again, so you see 1000 reset. And if I just close my Windows 7 machine and search here for my firewall, my firewall was disabled. Here. Right? If you enable the firewall again, this your firewall for this Windows 7 machine start dropping all the requests or start blocking all the requests for the acknowledgement flag, for the ping flag, for the sync request. Right? Your firewall will block all these responses, all these requests for you. So again, the point is firewall. If you have a properly configured firewall, you can easily block any kind of like connection request, any kind of scan, you can just bypass these things. And for the website part, when you are just scanning for the website, most of the time you are interacting with the firewall. You are not directly interacting with the server, right? Because if I just show you a simple diagram, just draw it in. Like uh, for all the time, let's say this is your firewall. Like on the back end for the firewall, we have different servers like first one, second one, third one, and so on. All these servers are connected to the same firewall. They were running behind that firewall. Right. And my victim or even my user was just interacting with this firewall, not actually with the server. When you are scanning some websites, most of the time you are just scanning for this firewall. Most of the time. And this kind of network, when the server was running behind that firewall, we call it DMC, demilitarized zone. That network, which was running back end, running behind that firewall, we call it DMC, demilitarized zone. DMZ And when for DMZ, it's not that network like a web server or something that is exposed to the outside network it's the same thing why, why we call it dmc because all the requests was, it was coming from this user was only be sent to this network only be sent to this dmc network if i just clean it and draw a better picture and just draw it when it, let's say this is my user here i don't have cloud here nothing part so i have to go with this magic option Right. Let's say we have a firewall here. Let's say 
here we have the DMZ network, here we have the more internal network, and let's say here we have some data centers, right? All these things were connected to some kind of hardware level firewall. They were on they were running on different networks again. You can see all the requests it was sent from this user to the servers. You can say these requests can only be sent to this DMC network where server was running. Request will only be sent to this DMG network, not to the internal network, not to the data centers directly. That's why we call it DMC, DMG Enterprise Zone, because these servers were handling requests sent by the user. That's why we call it like they were exposed to the internet, because they were handling some requests, they were replying back, they were just sending responses back to the user for their request. That's why we call them, they were just, let's say, they were in the DMG network or they were exposed to the internet. Because they were handling requests and they were sending responses back to the user. This is a separate network which was handling the requests and responses for that users for that internet part. All the okay. all the responses, all the requests actually correct. So all the requests coming from anyone, coming from anywhere in that globe, will be sent only to this network, only to these servers. That's why we call it DMZ. That was called it DMZ, demilitarized zone, or DMS, DMZ, DMZ, you can say. Right? Because of that functionality, we call it DMZ, or it's when it's exposed to the internet because they were handling requests and they were just sending responses back to the user. So most of the time, we are just interacting with the firewall because first your firewall will filter out the request and only then it would be sent to the server. Right, if we just go with like code scanning for google.com, we just go with nmap and let's go with google.com. I'm just at that time, I'm just interacting with the firewall, not with the actual servers, right? Because firewall has a different DMZ and all different things on the back end part. But if your request was not verified by the firewall, If you don't have high level firewall, if you don't have separate hardware for the firewall, then your request would be directly sent to the servers. And then you can just go with port scanning or that server. Like if you remember this, if you just remember this scan for this ksgcollege.com, right? You were able to scan the servers for those services. At that time, there was no separate hardware level firewalls, which was just used here to create a DMZ. There was no separate hardware, there was no separate firewall. There was like software level firewall, which was installed on that server. Right? There is no separate hardware. If you have separate hardware, you can only go with like simple. You're just infecting with the firewall. My firewall will only accept packets for port number 80 and port number 443. Here for the Google, I'm scanning only the firewall, not the server side, the backend. To scan the servers, I have to interact with the, I have to be inside that network. Only then I can scan the server for their different services, like SMTP, FTP, DNS part, whatever it was, DHCP, all different services we have there. But we have to be inside that network to scan the server. Unless your server was exposed back to the internet, like this KMS college, yes, college, sorry. So, any question to this part? Uh, no, it's good. Okay. No. So, we have two commands here in the most part. Like, you can just go with nmap with a simple IP. If you want to scan a single IP, you can use this option hyphen V if you want a detailed output. And you can use multiple Vs there. Like, if I just go with like nmap, let's go with like single V first time. Let's go with one dot. Let's say let's go with three. So you can scan it faster. You got some extra detailed output. For the verbosity part, you can use the V here, right? And in NMAP, or you can say with NMAP, you can use 10 Vs at the same time. You can use 10 Vs here. Right? NMAP allows you 10 level verbosity, you can say. Or you can use one, two, three, whatever you want. You can use as many Vs you want. But maximum length, 
So the maximum number of trees we can use was 10 here. So this was 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then you can just scan it. It will show you some kind of reasons. It will just go with other different things as well. Right? So you can just go with this verbosity part as well. Other than this verbosity, you can scan multiple IP addresses at the same time. You can scan network at the same time. You can scan range as well. If I specify range as well, like if I want, want to scan, let's say, I'm just removing this B right now. If I want to scan from port from this IP address 1.3 to so let's say 100, I can specify this kind of range. I don't want to scan the entire network, just scan the machines which has IP address which start from this range like 1.3. Right? And they, if there was a machine which come between this 1.3 to 1.100, just scan those machines. So that we have the scan range option part. So I'm just scanning 1.6 there, 1.7 will be scanned. This was my own IP address, right? 1.3 was there. So you can just go with these things as well. Other than this, we have few ports option with the hyphen P. We have some SU option. Like if you just remember the scan part, I'm just scanning TCP ports here. I'm always scanning for the TCP ports. Okay, you can just go with any scan reader. Or this one, you can just go with like any scan reader. I'm just scanning the TCP ports out there. I'm not scanning UDP ports. But if you want to scan UDP ports, you can use this option like nmap hyphen small s and capital U. With the special, you are just specifying nmap to scan for the UDP ports only. Like it will only send requests to the UDP ports, not to the TCP ports. But if you want to scan both TCP and UDP, at that time you have to use the option hyphen P, just go with capital U. Just go with colon again, go with semicolon, sorry, just go with colon here. And you can specify some range. Like I want to scan UDP ports which start from port number one and let's say to the 10,000. I want to scan one to 10,000 UDP ports. Then I want to scan some TCP ports as well. Again, just go with colons and you can specify some port range as like I want to scan 1,000 common ports to the TCP. But I want to scan UDP ports as well. For that, you can just go with this option, hyphen P and some UDP ports or some TCP ports. But if you just want to scan only and only UDP ports, then you can just go with like nmap hyphen small s and capital U. If you want to scan only for the UDP ports, at that time you can use this option. Right? Just go with one dot three. You have to go with open. Right? Again. UDP port scanning was always a time consuming thing. So you have to wait much longer for much longer than this TCP port scanning part. But you can do that. You can do the UDP port scanning as well. Other than this, we have some hyphen P option. Like if you just want to perform a quick scan, like if you just want to increase the time delay between the connection because between the packets sent from my Kali Linux. If you just want to increase the packet delay, if you just want to decrease the delay for that we have this option like i have to use some more tab here like let's go with nmap hyphen capital t we generally use it for the timing part right if you want to increase the delay then you have to lower the number and we have six options here if i just go with like man page with the nmap we have proper names which start from like sneaky, paranoid, intense, insane, aggressive, normal, and all different things. We have the proper names, which starts from zero to five. So I'm just showing you the names here. And let's say just go with like, uh, let's say time. And I have to figure out where we have those names. Not this one. Let's just go with the name directly. Here you can see. For number zero, where is number zero? We don't have any name for number zero. How is it possible, man? Yeah, for number zero, we have the name paranoid here. Right? For number zero, we have the name paranoid. For number one, we have the name sneaky. Then we have polite. Then we have normal, aggressive, and insane. Higher the number, lesser the time delay. Like if you want to increase, if you want to scan faster, then you can just go with five. If you want to scan slowly, then you can just go with one, zero, or two. 
you want to scan slowly, you can just go with zero, one, or two. By default, NMAP use this option and the runs or at this normal speed at number three. Right? If you want to scan faster, you can just go with number four or number five. But if you want to scan slowly, then you can just go with number zero, one, or two. Again, let me just show you this. Just call the command and map and I think capital T for that options. Let's say let's go with like uh, let's go with fast food first, right? I want to scan some UDP ports, more or less in capital U. Let's go with one number dot T. You just came back here. My UDP port scanning in the previous that was still running, right? If you just want to scan faster, you can just go with hyphen capital T with the number five. And press enter. It will quickly send the packets and quickly end up the result for you. You can see this hyphen capital T5. We got the result, but on the other tab, my scan was still running for the UDP ports. Right? So you can just go with these things as well. Like so just why would I wanna do faster scan? Like when you want to go for a quick scan. And why do for the small, uh, slower one, like slower one has some more detailed results. Like if you just okay. want to go with like more accurate results, then you can just go with like slower scan. Okay, okay. Yeah, for more accurate results, you can just go with slower scan. But for a quick, for a faster results, you can just go with like faster scan. The point is, again, if I go with like simple without having small capital U option, if I just go with that number three, I'm just going with this option. I'm just going with the speed light here at number two if you just let me just scan it at number two here it's still running right so scan was still running because i have just increased the delay which is the time delay between the request that's why it's still slow but on the other hand if i just execute the same command and map this one I'm just copying this command, copy it, and just execute it without this hyphen capital T and two. I got the result, right? But with this slower scan, we got more accurate results. That's why we use this slower scan that faster scan as well. So we have these options in that map. Other than this, we have the hyphen smallest capital T. Just remember, let me explain here. I have to pause all those scans. Just close all these tabs. Just reset my wire shark. Okay. So if I just go with simple and map, and let's say let's go with one dot three here. And I'm using hyphen R here some more time and press enter. I send some requests. I got some packets on the wire shark. And if you just came back here, let's support. Let's just come directly back to four node 31. I'm sending some request here at packet number 35. You just see the packet number on the left hand side with the packet numbers here. And I'm using my mouse as well for the same thing. So you can just see the I'm just sending some request for the packet number for the port number 21 on my victim machine. On the packet number 37, I got the reply as a sync plus acknowledgement. But for the TCP TV handshake, after receiving sync plus acknowledgement, what we generally do, we again send the acknowledgement to complete the TCP three way handshake. But NMAP doesn't do that. What NMAP will do, instead of sending the acknowledgement, NMAP will just reset the connection just by sending the RST flag out there. At packet number 39, you can just see this thing. After receiving sync plus acknowledgement from port number 21, I have simply reset the connection. Right, so NMAP will never just complete the TCP three way handshake by default. Okay. So for N, if you just want to complete the TCP three way handshake, we have to use two options. Like if you just go with NMAP, again, let's go with hyphen R. Let me reset my wire shot again. So to complete the TCP three way handshake, you have to use the option like hyphen small s and capital T, right, to complete the TCP three way handshake. And just go with the port, just go with the IP address here and press enter. This time, we just analyze the packets. So you can see 
Let's go with packet number 21. Where it is? Yeah. At packet number 22, you can see this time. Here at my cursor. I'm sending a request to 21. Right? And let's wait. Let's cover this form for packet number 21. 21, 21, 21. Yeah. At packet number 51, I got a response from port number 21 from the request machine. Like with a sync plus acknowledgement here. Right? But this time, instead of sending the reset flag, first I will send the acknowledgement flag to complete the TCP three-way handshake. At packet number 53, you can just verify this thing. I'm sending acknowledgement out there. Then I'm just sending the reset plus acknowledgement to reset the connection. But I don't want to keep the connection alive. Right? After completing TCP three-way handshake, I close the connection. Because I don't want to keep the connection alive. That's the point here. But your NMAP first complete the TCP three-way handshake, then terminate the connection. For that, for that thing, you have to use this option. I think small s and capital T. Right? After this, we have few other options as well. Like if you just want to identify the operating system for those machines, just want to identify the service versions, right? We have few other options as well, which you can use. So we have an option like let's say let's go with the OS part first. So for operating system detection part, you can just go with NMAP hyphen capital O. You can use hyphen capital O when you want to identify the operating system for the request machine, right? And just enter the IP address here. So let's go with all the machines one by one. Or you can just go with these things. Let's say let's start from machine number three. Let's start with the IP address at three. And let's just take it to 31. Or let's take it to 32. Let's take it to 32, right? And specifying a range that I want to identify operating system for all the machines within this IP range. And just press enter. Again, OS detection part is a time consuming thing because first it will identify all the open ports, then it will identify the operating system and all different things, right? We have more option here which you can use when you want to identify the service version. Like which version of the access service was running on the back end, which version for the FTP service was running, which version for the SMTP service was running, which server was running on the for the FTP service. When you want to identify these things, you can just go with NMAP. I can small s capital B, like scan for the version part, right? And you want to scan for service versions. So for this, you can use the option I can small s capital B. And let's say let's go with like a single IP address this time because again it's a time consuming thing. I don't want to take it long. Just press enter. It will give you a list of all the IP addresses. It will give you a list of all the ports, all the services, and the service versions as well. Right? As you can see, this time we got the open ports, open state, services, and the service versions as well. Right? You can just verify at port number 80. Apache server was running and the server version was 2.2.8. Right. You can just verify these things as well with this hyphen smallest capital B option. Other than this, we have the OS output here on the back end on the other tab for you. And you can see for this IP address 1.3, I got two open ports, all the services. And if you just scroll a little bit, you can just see. The OS details part, right? You can see my machine was, you can see my Linux is running Linux machine on the back end, and the Linux version was in between like 2.6.33 to 2.6.9. So 1.6, I have few open services this time, and if you just came down, you can see the OS details. If my victim was using Windows 7 from service pack 0 to service pack 1, it's never accurate. It's never accurate. It will not give you the result like your victim was using Windows 10 and the version was like 1907. It will give you a proper range for those things. Like, let's say uh, your victim was using Windows 10, but the range could be like between 1903 to 1907 and all different. It will give you a range all the times. As same thing was there. For Windows 7, we got a range from service pack 0 to service pack 1. Right? Again, we got one more thing like. The victim could be running like Windows Server 2008 as well for service pack 1, 2008, 
R2 version as well, Windows 8, Windows 8.1 updated version as well. Right, so you can just give it, you can just get a hint for this OS detection. Just scroll down. I can't hear you now. Hello. Yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah. I'm just trying to identify the OS detail part. In yours. That's my. So can you see the OS detail for one dot thirty one? Okay. Let me like stop it again. Let's just stop it. Let's put the machine this time. Let's uh, stick to 31. So we have two other commands also which you can use. Like uh, we have the IL part. Like if you remember, and we want this type. We don't have the OS detail part. OS is more like the OS match for host. Okay, let's try with the N part. Maybe we got the result. I think that will be small n. So I'm just explaining you the IL part. If you remember. I create a file with the name ip.txt. You remember this thing, right? So if you want to scan all the IP addresses which are listed in that ip.txt file, then you can use this option and map iPhone small i and capital L for the input list and then just specify the file name. It will scan all the IP addresses which are listed in that ip.txt file one by one, right? So it says out of these three IP addresses, two hosts were active. 1.6 and 1.3, right? Because my, my because my NMAP will first identify the machine was active or not with the simple sending the ICMP packet just, just by sending the ping request, right? The machine because my NMAP will first verify the machine was active or not. Then it will show you the result. We can just go with files as well, and you have some IP addresses of file. Then even you can just go with this NMAP. This option has small i and capital L for input list. Other than this, we have an option we call it aggressive scan, the capital A option. So for aggressive scan, we need to go with a few other things first, like we need to go with like OS detection. And my anime was not able to identify the operating system for this 1.31 by the firewall versus running state. You can see no exact. OS matches for the host test condition not idle because the firewall was blocking all the packets in the backend part. But if the firewall was not running, then you can identify the OS as you can see here. We got the OS part for Windows 7, we got the OS part for Linux as well. Right? So you can see if your firewall was accepting the ping request or the ICMP request, even then you can just identify the operating system. Other than this, and map has some scripts as well. And map has some previous scripts inside it. So let me just show you the script first. You can just go with like and map script categories. And map has around like 604 scripts. You don't have to remember all the script names. What you can do, you can just remember, you can just memorize the script categories. So let's just call it categories here. So we have two script categories here, like authentication. For authentication part, we have the AOTH auth. Right. Other than this authentication, so for the NMAP, we have some categories here. We don't have to remember all the 604 script names. Like we have script for all the services like address, FTP, DFS, HTTP. We have all the services for different vulnerabilities as well, for different services as well, right? 
So what you can do, you can just keep your, you just remember these category names. Like we have two services for authentication, for broadcasting part, for because for some default categories, right? For some discovery part, we have different categories here. So when you want to execute any category here, you can just execute this command. Just to execute all the scripts in any category. Like if I'm, right now I'm just in the default category here, right? And you can see a list of all the scripts which were available in the default category, right? When you only execute all the scripts for this default category, you can just execute this simple command like nmap hyphen hyphen script and the category name. Let's call it default. I'm going to execute the default category here. And then you specify the IP address out there. You can just execute them on any machine. You can use you can just execute them on a range as well. It's again you can use multiple options at the same time, right? So when you want to execute the scripts, you can just use this option hyphen hyphen script and the default, right? Now the point is when you want to execute all these three options at the same time, like when you want to execute nmap hyphen capital O for OS detection, hyphen smallest capital B for version detection. And hyphen hyphen script for the default category, right? Instead of writing all these three, or you can say with the trace root option, right? When you want to execute all these four services at the same time OS detection, service version detection, your default scripts, and your trace root part. When you execute all these four, what you can do, you can use a single option hyphen capital A. For the aggressive scan, like right? you just use this option hyphen capital A and just specify the IP address out there, right? At that time, it will execute all those four options. The first, and then it will start with OS detection, it will move toward the version part, then it will move toward the default script part, it will then go with the trace root option, and it will give you the list of all the outputs. When I press enter. Again, it's a time consuming thing because you have multiple options to be executed, right? Again, it's a time consuming thing. And you can see here, I got my, on the other tab, I got my output for the default scripts, right? Like I have the port not 21 running, and you can see FTP anonymous logging was allowed out there. You can just scan with these things as well. I got some hotkeys for the SSH service. So you can just go with this something like 22. We got some output, we got some hot keys for the 22, we got some result for the SMTP service, right? We got some result for the DNS service, we got some result for HTTP. We have different services, we have different things according to their different services, according to their default script part, right? But when you want to execute all these four options, you can use the aggressive scan, like hyphen capital A. As you can see, you got the port number, you got the state. We got the service and we got the version part for the smallest capital B. We got the versions, we got the output for the default scripts, as you can see here. Right? You can just verify their output. <laughs> you can verify the output with these options, like you can just scan them manually and then you can just compare them. Like we got the same output, the default scripts as we got here. So we got the output for the simple port scanning version detection part of our default scripts. If we just scroll down, you can see a few other details as well. Like here we have the results. Let's say like uh, we have the result for NetBIOS, okay. We just check for the OS detection. Like the OS details. It's OS details. SMB OS discovery. We got the computer name at a square table, right? We got the all different things for where's the version for the Linux part. Linux okay, but I want the slide description. 
I don't know why we don't get the results, but it executes the OS part as well. It executes the OS detection as, as well, right? Or you can just use these commands manually as well. If you just want to go with aggressive scan, you can just use them manually, like hyphen capital O, hyphen S, V. You can just use hyphen capital S, small c. So it's small s capital C for the default scripts, only for the default scripts. This option, hyphen small s capital C, is limited to the default script, right? You can't specify the category name here. And just present. Then we should open options for that. Right? So you can do that. Other than this, let me just check what was left. So we are done with the aggressive scan, OS detection part, default scripts, version detection part. When you have the IPv6 address only for the person, then you can just give this option IP6 to specify the IPv6 address for that machine, right? Otherwise, you can use this option hyphen small s and capital S when you want to scan with the sync flags, right? And Nmap by default use this option. But if you want to specify, you can specify as well. We call it generally sync scan or the ping scan, right? But for the hyphen small s capital A, again, we call it acknowledgement scan for the ping scan. You can use the same name for both the things. And my by default execute this one, sync scan, it always use sync packets to verify the port was in open state or not. Right? And for firewall, you can use this option type in smallest capital A. When you want to use your customize your own flags, then you can use this option hyphen hyphen scan flags. Right? With this option, you have to specify the flag name. Like you want to use the sync flag SYN, you want to use acknowledgement flag for the ACK, or you want to use the finished flag for the FIN. Right? And you want to use your custom flag. At that time, you can use this option, hyphen, hyphen, scan flags. Okay. After that, we have the hyphen capital P, small n, like not to ping the machine. Don't verify the machine was in active state or not, just start scanning. Right? Just start scan, just start sending the packets for the port scan part. Other than this, we have the RCP, RPC port scanning part, like this option, hyphen, capital, hyphen, small s, capital R. This one was specially designed for the RPG services, what you can say. Uh, this one is more focused on the RPG service. Again, this will scan all other ports as well for the RPG services. It will give you a list of all the open ports, all the services running out on their ports, all the versions for those ports. But this option is more focused on so. You can use this option like nmap hyphen small s and capital R when you want to specifically scan for the RPC service. Other again, this option hyphen small s capital R scan for all other services as well, for all the service versions as well, but it's more focused on the RPC service, right? So I'll just show you the output for 1.3. You have to wait for that part because to like execute the version detection as well. But if you just if you just want to analyze this output, you can see like we got the result for this I will smaller capital R option and you can see the services with their version. But we got the RPC services as well. Like there is RPC service. There should be RPC service there it is at port number one double one. Right? You can go with this option as well if you want to stick to the RPC service. Other than this, you can use Xping3 for the same thing. It's again, it's a one more tool like Nmap, but personally, I generally use Nmap because it's more powerful than this Xping3. But if you want to use and and Xping3, then you can use it, right? So I have listed out some of the commands here, which you can try. Other than this, Xping3, we have the OS detection part. We have already completed that, and we have few options through which you can bypass. You can just try to bypass the misconfigured firewall, right? And we have multiple other options as well which you can try. Like if I just go with simple NMAP and just press enter. I got a list of all the options that are available in the NMAP, right? And here we have the options for the firewall. Just scroll above. We have all these options. You can use all these options for the firewall detection part for firewall bypassing techniques. 
you can just give it a try for all these options, right? So I'm just explaining you some, some of the options here. So the first one is you can just call it hyphen small s for the fragmentation part. Like if you want to just break your packet into more, into much smaller packets, right? You want to fragment your packet into much smaller packets, then you can use this option hyphen small f. We call it for the fragmentation. I want to fragment it into a size of like eight bytes, 10 bytes, right? So for the option for the size, if you want to specify the size, you can use this option hyphen hyphen MTU, right? And then just specify the size here. So size would be like something, let's say eight bytes or let's say 16 bytes, but it should be a multiple of eight, right? So you can just go with like maximum packet size here. Maximum data that it can contain. You can just go with that part for the MTU option for the fragmentation part, right? You can just stick to A, you can just stick to 800, 80, whatever you want. But it should be a multiple of A, right? Then just specify the IP address here and press enter. With that thing, you can just try to bypass the firewall if it's misconfigured. Again, if it's misconfigured only, then you will be able to bypass the firewall. But we can use it right. <clears throat> so after specifying the fragmentation option and the maximum size, just press enter. So have to go with pseudo permissions, just go with and press enter. Right? Other than this fragmentation part, when you want to use or when you want to send packets from some random ports, and you can just analyze the output. We got only a single port out there. It was enabled by third party software, right? We were not able to access, we were not, we not get a list of all the default services like NetBIOS, SMB, and all different services, which are by default enabled in the Windows operating system. So we can't bypass this Windows firewall with this hyphen small f option and the MPU as state here, right? Other than this, when you want to send, when you want to use some random you know, source IP addresses, right? At that time, you can use the option like, let's go with pseudo permissions first. So pseudo two. Then you can use the option like NMAP hyphen capital D. We call it default, as you can see here. Like you can just call it hyphen D. And you want to use random source for, for IP address, right? So after that, you can specify like which IP you want to use as your source. Or you can do one more thing. You can specify a number there. So, like, if you want to use ten random IP addresses as your source, first, the NMAP will use the first random IP address and scan all the ports. Then, NMAP will choose the second random IP address and scan all the ports. Then, third and scan all the ports, fourth and so on. Right? It will just start scanning from all those random IP addresses one by one and scan all the ports for all those. Random IP addresses. So let's say let's go like five, and I have to use like my wire chart for the same thing. So I can just show the random IP addresses out there. Just go with N as a capital D for the decoy part, and let's go with like one dot three for the scanning. And as you can see here, as my source, I'm using some addresses like zero 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 dot five is one of them, and there will be something else as well. Okay, nothing different. That should be the case. Let's go with like 10. I'm missing one direction. No. Okay, I'm using some option maybe. Okay, I'm using R&D. Sorry, I was missing the R&D part. So you have to specify how many random IP addresses you, you want to use. For that, you have to specify the R&D. In capital part, R and D and the columns here. Like if you want to specify the IP address, then you don't want to use the R and D and just specify the IP address like ten dot ten dot ten. Whatever it was again, you can use any IP address as your source. And if I just reset my Wireshark and again show you the packets, 
IP 1.10.10 and if I press enter, this IP address would be used as my source address to send the sync request. Right? Again, MNF will first use this IP address as my source, then use my own, my extra IP address as my source. Right? But if you want to use multiple IP address at the same time, then you have to specify the RND option. Not this one. Like I, if I want to use five random IP addresses, I just go with R and D for the random number, and let's go with the five. And we will automatically use any random IP address out there. And just go with five shots and press enter. Now, this time you can see, I got random IP addresses like 178, 178, 45, 105, 69. Then we have the second one, 62, 255, 100, 168. Then we have the third one, is my own, my actual IP address, 1.7. Then we have the fourth one, 128, this one, 123, right? So you can just go with these things as well. When you want to use some random IP addresses, and then scan all the posts one by one from all those random IP addresses, you can use this decoy option. You can just and give so it a try, yes. Okay, and for port numbers also, we can do something like this. So the port numbers is so for example can we manipulate port numbers also for example we specify the ip address if i want for specific ports then no, no, no. You, you, you can't you can't change the port number and then okay. automatically choose any random port number from the bank list okay yeah you can't change the port number out there okay so you can give it a try for the hyphen d option hyphen f option for the fragmentation part as well okay other than this we have one more thing which you can use that we call it xmas bank then you are using three different flags like push, urgent, and finish flag. Let me explain what is push, what is urgent, and what is the finish flag first. Then we will jump to the scan part. So, let's go to the two. Yeah. When you want to update, like uh, when you are standing or when your packet was, um, when your packet was generated from your machine request, or you when your machine generates some request, it should be processed on some like uh, urgently. Like when you want to process, let's say, you just give it a go. Like, let me clean it. So, in case of the router part, we have a queue of packets. Like, we have like packet number one out there, then we have packet number two, packet number three, and so on. We have a queue out there, right? But when you want to process any packet before processing all other packets, like when I send, Let's say I have four packets, like one, two, three, and four, right? If I normally set a packet, the packet will go at the end of the queue. After processing these four packets, my packet number five will be processed. But what if I want to process this packet number five before all these four packets, right? And if the packet was generated from my system itself, I'm not the one who generated the call, my system generated the call. At that time, we use the urgent flag, URG, right, to give it to, or just to prioritize the processing for that flag, for that packet. Just to prioritize the packet processing, or when it was generated from our system itself, we use the urgent flag, URG, right? Then, when your user wants to prioritize the packet processing part, then you can go with the push flag, PUS. For PSH, we generally use PSH, not PUS, PSH we use, right, for the push flag. When your customer, when your user want to prioritize the packet processing. We use push for one more thing. Like if you just read about, if you have read about that part, like uh, sliding window concepts and all different things. Uh, yes, I have. Yeah, hello. Yeah. Yes. So when you, any packet was generated by your user itself, and when you want to prioritize it, then you can use push flag or the push flag is used for one more thing. Like uh, if you just read about the sliding window concept, right? Like we have a window in our system and we have a window on the server side, which was used to send and receive packets. Like uh, let's take this one. 
we just cut it. Take it on one side. We generate one uh, server as well. So let's say this one is my server, right? And it has like uh, a window size of around let's say 100, right? And this one is my client, let's say, and it has a window size of around let's say 50. Like it can store 50 packets. I'm just going to random number just to explain you, right? The size was large, so the actual mean time, the size was large. Then just going to be any random number right now, right? So my client can only accept 50 packets at a time. So you can say your server can accept 100 packets or send 100 packets at a time. But my client can only accept or send 50 packets at a time, right? When you want to update the, the window size on the client, on the, when, you want to, when you want to like tell, when your client wants to act, when you, when you, when your clients want to tell to the server that I have the window size as 50, right? And out of that 50, let's say 25 is already full. 25 is already consumed. Like 25 packets were already there, right? So how many left? Don't go to 25. Let's say like 30 was there. 30 packets were already, always there, were already there. And we have only space we have for 20 packets. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. So on our client side, 30 packets were all already there. And we have the size, we have the space left for 20 packets only. Right. When my client wants to explain these things, explain the pack, explain the window size, like how many space we have, how much space we have, how much packets we can accept at a time. When you want to update these packets, when you want to update this uh, window size on the server, when your client want to explain this packet size or the window size available space and all different things to the server, even at that time, we use the push flag, PSH, right? So your push can be used just to prioritize the packets or just to update the window size on the server side. So even your server can use the push flag to update the window size on the client side. Again, they both can use to the same thing. So when you want to use all the flags, like push, urgent, and finish, let me explain the finish as well. Like let's say my server has to send like uh, one GB of data. So is one GB, let's go with 100 MB of data, right? And 400 MB, let's say we have like mm, 10,000 packets, right? After sending nine triple nine packets, only one packet will be left at the last packet. The last packet will contain a flag. We call it finish flag, F-I-N. This was used to specify that this one is the last packet for the data transmission. This is the last packet for data transmission. There is no, There were no more packets which you will be receiving. This is the last packet, right? And at that packet, we use the finish flag. Just to specify this is the last packet and here you can just terminate the connection, right? After receiving all the packets, the client can terminate the connection. For that purpose, we use the finish flag, F-I-N, right? And for scanning, when you want to use all these, these flags at the same time, you can use the option like NMAP, hyphen small f and capital X. We call it Xmas scan. You can use it. Let me just reset my fire chart here. And then let's go with like any IP address, let's go with 31 and press enter. This time you can see, I'm using, I'm sending requests from 1.7 to 31, but the flags used there is finish, push, and urgent, right? So it will just, it will simply confuse the firewall, like how to reply it for the, all these packets, right? And if your firewall was not properly configured to handle this kind of request, you get the output, right? For the ports, or sometimes you get the output like this one, 
open filter. If your end map is not sure about the port state, all thousand ports could be in the open state or they could be in the filtered state. But end map is not sure about that part, right? But if the ports are open, you get a list of all the ports. So you can use this XML scan. You can use this like decoy option to spoof your IP address. You can use like segmentation as well for the hyphen app option. Again, you can use this thing. So, what's left? Again, one more thing. Like if you don't want to use CLI version for the NMAP, we have one more tool which you can use for both Kali Linux and Windows. Like if you want to perform the port scanning in the Windows, then we have a tool which you can download like Zen Map. Zen Map. Which you can download from again official website for the NMAP. And here we have the download page. And here we have the link. Right? So you can just download Zen Map and install it. Then you can just search for Zen Map. Again, it's a just it's just a GUI version for the NMAP on the back end. They were executing the commands for the end map. You can just create, you can just customize the command, just specify the target here. It will automatically update the command. You can just write your own command, or you can just go with some profile cells. Like you want to go with intense scan, you want to go with like intense UDP, port scanning, thing scanning, quick scanning. We have multiple other options. We have multiple different profiles here, right? So you can just write your own command as well. Or you can just write, you can just go with this default profile. It's completely up to you how you want to scan this part. 